Welcome back to Instruments for Change. And today, we are going to be looking further into how we play the keyboard, how we play the piano. Now, today, we are going to be learning how to read music. Now, I know that you have been taught how to read music before, but you're going to learn my method of reading music. And I hope it will help you. It may bring a different perspective, but it will help you. And then we are going to learn how to look into our hymn books and our, our music sheets and how to read from it. All right. So we're going to start with our, our board. So let's discuss something. Follow me to the board. Now, this is called the grand staff. The grand staff is two staff put together. What's a staff? Now, the staff is five lines. One, two, three, four, five. Five lines on which musical notes are written. The grand staff is two or more staffs put together, and it's joined by a bracket. Now, the bracket tells us that everything in the grand staff is played at the same time. So let's look at the parts of the grand staff. Here we have this funny looking shape and it is called the G clef or the treble clef. On the piano, normally with a G clef or the treble clef, we use the right hand to play the G clef or the treble clef. Not all the time, but most of the time. The, this other shape here looks like a backward C, it's called a bass clef or the F clef. No, the bass clef or the F clef, we use the left hand to play it. Now, why is it called a G clef? Why is it called the F clef? Simple. The G clef starts normally on the G line. So, the second line from the bottom of the G clef, which is this line, is a G line. Why is this called an F clef? For the same reason. Because the second line from the top of the bass clef, which is this line, is the F line. We're going to learn a lot more about that. Now, what else do we find on the grand staff? We find the key signature. Now, what is a key signature? Now, if you remember, when we spoke about the cycle of fifths, we, we spoke about um, C having no sharps or flat. Then we have G, which has one sharp, D, two sharps, A, three sharps. Now, on the key signature, Right here, I wrote two sharps, one on F sharp and one on C sharp. When we have two sharps, that is the key of, you got it, the key of D. So, it can be any key here. We can have sharps, we can have flats. Right now, I just use the, um, the D uh, key to indicate the key signature. The next thing we have is our time signature. The time signature tells us how, um, what beats we're using and how many beats there are in each measure. So let's start right there in our reading of, of our music. I'm sure that you have learned this somewhere else before, or if you have visited our theory classes, you would have learned these. Now, the first note that we are going to discuss in in, in timing is a note that looks just like an egg. Now, this note is called the semi-breve or it is also called the, the whole note. All right. Now, the semi-breve or the whole note if it's in this common time that we see all the time, which is 4-4 four, four timing, this will get 4 beats. 
Now, every time something happens to the shape of the note, the note gets shorter. So let's add something to the semi-brief. Remember now, the semi-brief is just, uh, it, it looks like a, an egg on the side. Now, let's add something to the semi-brief. Let's add a pole to it. And that now is called the half note. And what happened is that the, the, the time cuts in half. Now, if it's in the same time as 4-4, four four, it now becomes two beats. Then, if we should shade that half note in, something else happens to it. So, it was just an egg falling on this side. Now, it's, it has a pole, but it's not shaded in. It becomes a half note. Now, it's shaded in. It becomes a quarter note. And the quarter note in 4-4 four four timing, or this common timing, it would be one beat. Now, something else can happen to it. We can add a flag to it, and now it becomes the eighth note. And it has half beat. And we can further complicate it by adding two flags. And it's now a sixteenth note. And it has a quarter beat. Now, do not mix up the name of the note with the number of beats. All right. Now, what does all of this mean? Let's look. Let's, let's put a chart together so we can figure out what is happening here. So, the whole note would have four beats, as we know here. So, how many half notes can we have with the whole notes? We can have two. So two half notes will give us a whole note. How many quarter notes can we have with one half note? Two also. So, so we can have two quarter notes here. And we can have two quarter notes here. So, that goes to show that we can have four quarter notes for the, the whole note. Very good. Now, how many eighth notes can we have in each quarter note? We can have two. So we have two quarter notes, two uh, eighth notes for each quarter note. Now, what we can do with the quarter notes is that the flag that we have on the quarter note, we can join them together. So here, we can join the flag at the top. It's the same thing as that, as if they were single. Then we can put... So we know now that we have two eighth notes for each quarter note or 
for a eighth note for each half note. So what we can also do is that we can have all four quarter note, um, eighth notes join at the top and it is the same thing. All right? And of course, we have our 60 notes. But we, we also, we know that we can play this game all day and go all the way down. So we can imagine that for each 16 note, well, for each eighth note, we can have two 16 notes. We can have uh, four 16 notes for each quarter note, eight 16 notes for each half note, and of course, 16 for the whole note. So let's talk a little bit more about how does this work out when we are playing music. Very good. So, when we look at the time signature, here I wrote four-fourths. So you can have different kinds of time signatures. You can have three-fourths, uh, four-sixteen, two-two. You can have different time signature. The top number tells you the, let's write it here. The top number tells you the number of beats. And the bottom number tells you the, the type of beats or notes that we're dealing with. Now, if you should say this is math, this would be four quarters or four quarter notes. So right away we know that in each measure we have four quarter notes. So if we should write them out, we would have four quarter notes to each measure. Now what's a measure? A measure is when we have our bar lines. So between each bar line is what we call a measure. So that is where we count our four quarter note beats. So if we are saying we have four quarter note beats, that simply means that we will have the value of four quarter note beats between the bar lines. So we could have four quarter notes, we could have two half notes, or we could have one whole note. Or we could have also, we could have eight eight notes, or 16 16 notes, or a combination of the lot. So let's look at some combinations. Let's, let's do that right here. We could have one whole note. That would be four beats. So if we were playing a note for one whole note, I'm going to clap instead of playing. So you'll understand what I'm saying. So you're going to hold it for four beats. So let's count that. So if we're going to play this in the measure, and we're counting for the measure, one, two, three, four. We have to count four because the top number tells us the number of beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if it was three beats or the number three here, we would have to count three. So it'd be one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. If it's just two, it would be just two. One, two, one, two. We could have six up here, which is common with six, eight timing. So when we count in six, eight timing, we actually count it in two parts, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. All right. But now we are counting just four. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, 
three, four. So if we're going to play a whole note, we're going to hold it for the entire four beats. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or how many of them we have. Now, let's look at our half beats. We can have two half beats in each measure in a 4-4 four, four timing. So we can have two half beats. So we'll play the two half beats, we'll hold them just for two beats only. So it will be one, two, three, four. Now one of the common um, mistakes I see some, some students do is that if they have two half beats, they count one, two, one, two. No. The timing tells us we should have four beats in each bar. So we have to count one, two, three, four. Not one, two, one, two, but we have to count all the way to four, then we start over again. Now, or we could have four uh, quarter beats or quarter notes. One, two, three, four. So if we have four quarter notes, we will play them one, two, three, four. All right. Or we could have eight eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And remember, we can join the flag at the top. Now, how is it that we count eight, eight notes? We are going to count two for each beat. So if the beat is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we count two in each. So we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or some teachers will teach this way, one and two and three and four and one and two and so on. Very good. So we're not going to go further. The next lesson, we are going to go deeper into this. Now, the second thing I want to do today for the next few minutes is show you an easy way how to remember the lines and the spaces. Here. Now, I know that you have some teachers that teach uh, good boy deserves favor always and F-A-C-E, and so on. Listen to your teacher. Those are good lessons. However, I'm going to teach you something a little bit different today. Maybe you had trouble learning it that way. This time around, what we're going to do is learn it my way. Now, what I want to do is that I don't want to separate the, the bass clef from the treble clef and the lines from the spaces. We're going to learn it one time, one straight way. And um, let's see if you can remember it this way, okay? So we're going to take each line and each space. Now, each line and each space comes with uh, a different note, a different name. So we're going to start on this line. Then we have this space. Then we have this line, then we have this space, then that line, then that space, then that line, that space, that line. And then when we get to the top line of the base clef, then we'll find a space just above that line. So that space has its own name. Then in between the bass clef and the treble clef, we have a little line. That line is called a ledger line. Now, a ledger line happens when there's a note on a line or beyond that line and it's outside of the, the clef, the five lines on the staff. Now, there we have a note on that line and that note has its own name. 
Above that, we have another space, which is a space just below the bottom line of the G clef. So between the top line of the F clef and the bottom line of the G clef, there is a ledger line. And that ledger line is only seen when there is a note on it. And in between the lines, we have spaces. So just between the bass clef and the treble clef, or the F clef and the G clef, we have three notes, two spaces, one line. Then we have another line, the bottom line of the uh, G clef, the first space, then a line, then a space, then a line, then a space, then a line, then a space, then a line. And we can go forever with that. But what we are going to do now is that we are going to name all the lines and all the spaces. Now, once you have figured out that just on the keyboard where we go from in alphabetical order, from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, then we start over at A and go on as we go up, the same thing happens right here. So I'm going to give you the first note, the lowest note here on the bass clef, and that note is G. Now, if we are going in alphabetical order, the line above it is, ah, you guessed it, A. Then the, the that, uh, sorry, the space above the G line Low, lowest space is A. Then the line above A is B. And the space above B, C. And the line above C, D. The space above D, E. The line above that is F. The space above F is G. The line above G. Ah, we we'll start the alphabet all over again. So it's going to be A. Then we have a space above A. And that is B. And this line, this note that sits on the little line that is in the middle of the bass clef. And the treble clef, that line is C. But it's not just any C. Because it's in the middle of the bass clef and the treble clef, it's called middle C. It's called middle C. Then the space above C is D. Then the first line or the lowest line on the treble clef is E, the space above that is F, the line above that is G, the space above that is A, the line above that is B, the space above that is C, the line above that is D. And this is really not that hard. The, the space above that is E. And the last line above that is F. So let's review. We're starting from the lowest note on the F clef. And the lowest note on the F clef is G. It's kind of funny. Listen to this. The lowest note on the F clef is G. And the highest note on the G clef is F. Now think about it. The people that invented this thing, they are brilliant. So, G is the lowest note. And then we go from line to space to line to space. All the way to the top. We go in alphabetical order. So G. Then we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F. And we stop there. Very interesting. Now, how is it that we're going to memorize it in one go? Mm. 
Follow me. Let us separate all the lines. Take out all the lines and separate them from the spaces. So if we should take out all the lines, we will have here just the lines alone by itself. We have G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F. So the lines will be G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F. So if we should separate all the lines in the grand staff, this is what we'll get. G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F. So all you have to remember now is G, B, D, F, A, S, G, B, D, F. Say it again with me. G, B, D, F, A, S, which is A, C, E, G, B, D, F. So the first four lines from the bottom of the F clef is G, B, D, F. And the last four lines on the treble is G, B, D, F. Think about it. That's easy. One thing to study. Instead of good boy, deserve favor always and the other things, all you need to know is that the first four lines are G, B, D, F. And the last four lines are G, B, D, F. And we know now that the top line, the middle C, and the bottom line here is A, C, E. So it's G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F. How simple can that be? Can't get any simpler. But let, guess what? Let's separate the spaces. Let's write down the spaces here. The spaces, let's take them out. A, C, E, G, B, D, F, A, C, E. Look at that. The spaces, there. you don't have to learn anything more because the spaces are the same thing as the lines. Just Opposite. We have A, C, E at both ends. The first three are A, C, E. And the last three are A, C, E. And in the middle, we have G, B, D, F. Nothing can be as simple as that. And that is how we learn our lines and spaces. Now in our next class, we are going to come back and we to learn a little bit more about that. And, and, but for this class, we are going to learn how to play some songs from our hymns. So we are going to come right back after this and we are going to study and practice some of these things that we just learned. So see you in a minute. The next person in line your friend at school or your co-worker may have COVID-19 and not know because they have no symptoms. You, on the other hand, could be hospitalized for two months or more if you become infected. Is it worth it? Stay socially connected, but keep the physical distance. Stay six feet away and avoid a hospital stay. COVID-19 is not over. Protect yourself while protecting others. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The point of wearing a mask is to prevent the spread of air droplets from persons who may or may not be infected. When wearing a mask, please ensure that the mask goes above the nose and below the chin. This might be a bit uncomfortable, but it's for your own safety. The position of the mask is very important. It should not be worn on your forehead, under your chin, or on your neck. Please do not remove the mask when speaking. This actually causes more droplets to be released into the atmosphere. Trust me, if you have on a mask, we will still hear you. When you're removing a mask, try not to touch the front of the mask. If you do, 
Remember to wash your hands or use hand sanitizer. Please throw away the mask appropriately. Remember, partial protection is better than no protection. Welcome back everyone, welcome back. And I'm so happy that you stayed with us. Now, can you imagine how easy it is right now to remember the notes that you learned? The lines, all the lines, you have to, all you have to know is G, B, D, F, A, C, E. G, B, D, F, A, C, E for the lines. G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F. And for the spaces, A, C, E, G, B, D, F, A, C, E. So we are now going to uh, get into playing our music. And we're going to start. For those of you that may have the Seventh-day Adventist hymn book, we're going to start with the uh, Rejoice, the Lord is King. Now, if you look at Rejoice, the Lord is King, you'll see we're going to play just the very top notes that are on the treble clef. You notice it's also 4-4 four, four timing. And there is no key signature that means that it is in the key of C. And the first note that you play is middle C. And that middle C, you see it's on that little line, it's called a ledger line. The next note is the lowest line. Remember now, those three notes in the middle, A, C, E. So E is the first note on the, the lowest line of the treble clef. So it's C, E, C, then G, then back to E, then C, B, A, G, F, E, D. That's just like you're playing a part of the scale descending. So let's play that. Let, let me try it low on the keyboard. So let's try that. So it's C, E, C, G, E, C. Then you play that middle part like you're playing the descending uh, C major scale, which we learned before. So let's practice that one more time. Once you have learned that, it will be easy for you to remember it. And there's nothing wrong with memorizing. So let's take the next, the next part of the song, which is the next line. We're going to take that top line again, just the top notes in, in the line. So it's D, E, C, A, G, no, that's an F. But before the F, you see a sharp. That's called an accidental. So we instead of playing the F, we're going to play the F sharp. And we learned about the F sharp about in, in our previous lessons. So let's play that again. D, E, C, A, G, F sharp, E. That is D, D. So that's an octave apart. D, D, C. All right, so let's do that now. D, E, C, A, G, F sharp, D, D, C. And the next two notes will be B, a, and then it comes to rest on the G. So let's learn that second line. Now, we can learn, we know the tune of the song, so it's easy for us to follow. But we have to also learn how to read 
the timing of the piece. And we are going to talk a little bit about it. Not everything we learned in this class, but we are going to put it together. All right, so let's start from the top. Good. So we learned that first part. Now let's learn the last part of the song. So it starts on G. It's G, A, B, C. Now all this is just one note behind the next. Lift up your voice. It's like we're playing the C major scale starting on G, ascending. And then we pick up at C again, and it's just like playing the C major scale all the way up to D. And then the last three notes, C, B, C. So let's learn that last part. So if we look at it, it lo lo looks like we're playing... Just like the C major scale starting at G up to C. So C, uh, G, A, B, C. Then we're going to play the entire C major scale and pass it and go to the next D and then C, B, C. So let's try that. Very, very good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So you can practice this, practice it over and over and over again. So let's try it one more time. And remember, nothing is wrong with uh, memorizing what you play there. After a while, you don't need to memorize it. You'll get used to the notes, used to the keys. But the best way to remember is to practice it. And remember our philosophy. We practice until we cannot get it wrong. So let's start. The C major scale. And soon we're going to be learning how to play the entire song with both hands and we are just going to enjoy it. But for now, we are just playing that first line which is the melody line or the soprano notes. Okay, let us look at another song and that song, let's look at hymn number 12. Now, hymn number 12 is joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Now, with joyful, joyful, you'll see in the music, you will see that there is one sharp. And that one sharp, based on our lessons before, we are now in the key of G. And the sharp is F sharp. So unless the music gives you an accidental then you will be playing F sharp every single time you see F. Now, this song is very simple to memorize. We start on B. Now, remember, G, B, D, F, A, C, E, G, B, D, F. So, but we're concentrating on the treble clef, and that is the third note in a third line on the treble clef, and that is B. So the first line is E, then we have G, B, D, F. So, so that third line, that middle line, is B. So let's start on B. So if you notice, on the, you have two notes on B. 
So two notes on B, then we step up to C, then we step up to D. So, then second measure, we start at D. And we, we, we four notes all the way down, and we are just going in alphabetical order. So let's start that again. Very easy, isn't it? Then we go to D, to G, sorry. Two on G. Two on G, A, B. Then B, A, A. And you'll see some notes there that we discussed. You see the eighth note. You see, a, you see the half note. And you see the quarter note. And you also see one thing that we haven't discussed yet, which is the dotted quarter note. But we are going to talk about that in our next lesson. So let's learn that first part. It's 2 on G, then we go up alphabetically to D. Then the next four notes, we, we are descending alphabetically from D. Then we have G. Up to B, then B. So it's that first line again. Then our next line is almost like the first one. So everything in the, the second line is just as the first line. The first three measures are identical. And just those la that last measure, the last three notes are different. So let's do the first line and the second line together. Very good, very good. Now, the third line, and if you notice in this song, all the notes kind of follow that linear uh, alphabetical order. They, they, don't, they don't go too far from the note that comes before it. So if it was an A, the next note is a B or it's a G. It's very, very close. Now, the third line, we start on A. Two on A, B, G. Then we see here an example of the eighth note with the uh, with the flags tied together. So we are going to play those two notes in the uh, with a timing of one one beat. So we are going to play two of those notes in one beat. So you see it? Then this. Two notes in the timing of one beat. And the same thing happens again. Except we end on A this time. So that is G, A, D. So let's play that line again. So we have uh, three, four movements. And they are almost similar. So what I would do at that point is that I will go back and I will try and remember everything from the beginning to that point because I don't want to forget what I did before. So that's everything up to that point. Now let's look at the very last line. That last line is just the same thing as the second line. No difference. Now 
Now, there are three things that you must put together here in order to play the notes the right way. Number one, you have to learn what these notes are. Number two, you have to use your ears to, to see if the notes sound like what they're supposed to sound like. And number three, you have to remember some of these things. And the more you remember these, these notes and memorize what the notes were when you're playing them, when you see them somewhere else, your memory muscles will kick in and you remember what it sound like, what notes it did at that time, and you'll do the same thing again, which will duplicate your, 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 um, your music. So, remember now, try and remember what the notes are. So let's go to another one. Let's go to number 15 in our song book, and it's my maker and my king. All right. So, it's in the key of C. It's four fourths, just like we had it before. Four fourths. All right. Now, so if we should look at it, and we should read the notes, it would be, it starts on G. So we have G, 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 A, B, C. So it's, it's again in our alphabetical order. Then we start at E. D, E, F, G, E. And that's our first line. Let's read the first line again. Let's do it together. See if you can remember and, and, and uh, rehearse those notes now. So it's G, 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 A, B, C, E. Then we have D, which is that space just below... The first line of the treble clef, G, sorry, D, E, F, G, E. So, there's one thing we need to keep in mind, is that once you recognize, let's say you recognize where that G is, you know that it is G, and then you see a note in the space above it, that must be A. So without even trying to remember, oh, that one is F-A-C-E-R-A-C-E, -E, whatever it is, you know that the, the, the space above it is A. So you know you just go straight to A. The line above that is B, the space above that is C, which happens in this music. So let's play it now. Then our second line is just as our first line, almost. So it starts out just the same way. If you should look at the music sheet, it's G, 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 A, B, C, as we had it before. Then C is repeated. Then we come back down the scale, B, A, G, then we say G, G, B, A, G. So that second line. Now, and our last line would be, it starts on G, and then two on C, two on G, then E, G, C, G, A, D, D, C, B, C. So let's do that last line together. G, C, C, G, G, E, G, C, G, A, D, D, C, B, C. All right. So let's do that now together. Uh, the whole thing from the beginning to the end. And some of these phrases are repeated. So you have seen them already. You do the same thing. So let's start from the beginning. My maker and my king.
Very, very good. I like that. So let's go to one more. Let's look at 221. 221, which is, oh, we did 221. Let us look at 229. 229. No, in 229, we are in the key of F. No, key of F has one flat. And that flat is B flat. Okay. So, let's look at, this one is a little bit more spread out. And now that we're learning the notes, we are going to uh, be jumping. Instead of going linear from G to A to B, we're going to be jumping all over the place a little bit here. All right, so let's try this one. And let's see if we can get through two more playing like this. See if we can, uh, we can learn and enjoy these. Now, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Okay, now let's start playing it from the beginning. Now we start with that middle C, and remember now, middle C is on the ledger line between the bass clef and the treble clef. Then we go to F, to one F, to one A, then G, F, G, A. So let's start that again. Middle C. To an F, to an A, G, F, G, A. That's the first line. Then the G, F, A, G, F. G, F, A, G, F. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Put those two parts together. F, sorry, C, F, F, A. A, G, F, G, A, G, F, A, G, F. So we put those two together. Let's move on to the next line. Starts with G. G, A, G, F, A. And now we see some eighth notes. So we play them a little bit faster. So let's start again, bring it forth. So that's G, A, G, F, A, C, B flat, A, G, A. C, B flat, A, G, A. Then we jump to the next line. C, 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 D, D, C, and now we have an accidental, which instead of playing the B flat, we're going to play B. So let's play that. C, 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 D, C, B, C, and that B is a B natural. So let's take it from the top. And let's put everything together. So it's C, F, F, A, A, G, F, G, A, G, F, A, G, F. G, A, G, F, A, C, B flat, A, G. Can't sit and play it as fast. C, 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 D, C, B natural, C. And then our last line will be A, 
C A F A. Now, let's look at that. That is the F chord, if you notice. Just the F chord, which we learned in a, a, a lesson before. A, C, A, F, A. And then we have that running set of notes again, because there are eight notes. So it's G, F, G, A, G. F, C, B flat. A, B flat, G, G, A. So let's do that last line from bring forth thy royal, bring forth the royal diadem. So let's do it from the beginning. just for one more and it is by far my favorite hymn it's crown him with many crowns now this one you'll notice it's the same key signature which i used earlier on the board which is d two sharps now the two sharps will be f sharp and c sharp now so look out for F sharp and C sharp. So it starts on D. So we have. So it's D, 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 F sharp, F sharp, D. So let's try that again. And if you know the second, the, 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 the second and the third, uh, these are faster than the first one because they are eighth notes. So that would be B, A, D, G, F sharp, E. So when you have practice that, put both together. Now we start on the E now, E, F sharp, A, B, A, then an accidental happens here, which is G sharp, then F sharp, E, A, D, C, D, B, B, A. So let's play that line. Let's try it again. It starts on E, F sharp, A, B, A, G sharp accidental. And when we get that, we put the both lines together. Let's try it. Now our next line, we start on A. A, A, F sharp, E, D, B. B, B, G sharp, F sharp, E, C sharp. So let's try that again. A, A, F sharp, E, D, B. B, B, G sharp, F sharp, E, C sharp. So without the talking, let's do that.
And the last line, I'm ahead of myself here. And the last line, and remember, when you get those three lines, practice all three before going to the last line so you don't forget anything. Last line now, we start on C sharp. D, C sharp, B, A, D, sorry, G, E, F sharp, A, G, F sharp, E, E, D. So let's do that all together. Let's do it from the beginning. That is crowning with many crowns. And so we have learned, we have gone through about five songs where we have been playing with the notes that we just learned. But we just are uh, we're just fooling around with the right hand, with the treble clef. So it's really not many, many notes. So when we, we, we come back, we're going to wrap up this session, and the next session, we're going to go deeper into our reading. And we're going to go deeper into doing things a little different. We will speak in a few minutes. Come right back. Then what was you doing? I'm looking for a program on EJC to watch. Oh, cool. <coughs> this looks like it's a good one. <coughs> Do it. What? Do it. Do what? You seriously not subscribed to EJC Virtual Church? No, I'm not. I don't. I'm not going to subscribe to it. All right, let me show you. I don't understand. All you have to do is log in to your Gmail account on YouTube. Scroll up like this, and simple. Press this button. Subscribe. Simple. Easy peasy. Okay, it looks easy. Mm-hmm. All right, now if you want to use your phone to subscribe, yes. all you have to do is click this big red word that says subscribe yes. like this okay and then you hit the notification bell that's easy exactly now let's go continue watching this program okay. music is really 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 fun uh, uh it's 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 comforting it's it's relaxing it's entertaining but more than that it is it is worship and we have learned five songs today we have looked at five songs which i'm going to trust that you are going to practice them but when you practice them Look at the words that are being said in, in, in some of these songs. For instance, rejoice the Lord is king. 
Your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice. Rejoice. Again, I say, rejoice. And it gives us a, a, a lot to, to be joyful about in these times. But let's look at Crown Him with Many Crowns. Beautiful song. And this song is by far my, my favorite uh, a hymn. Um, and I love it because of, of, of that last uh, verse that's written in, in, in our hymn book. It says here, uh, crown him the Lord of years, the potentate of time, creator of the rolling spheres, ineffably sublime. All hail, Redeemer, hail, for thou hast died for me. Thy praise shall never ever fail throughout eternity that is personal all hail redeemer hail for thou hast died for me for me what have i done to deserve somebody doing anything good for me worse somebody dying for me that is beyond my understanding and this is our perfect God, the one who came and spent time here on earth to show us how to live, that resisting sin is possible and that we can be saved through his blood. And this is why I love this song. And so when you play, worship, share them with somebody else and worship along with somebody else. And this could be a good way to witness. So I'm going to play this song out for you and we will see each other the next time.